My name is Nilesh and I will take your speaking test today. May I get your name? Yes, of course. My name is Manisha Singh. Okay. Can I see your passport? Yeah, sure. Of course. Yes, please. Okay. Manjusha, what is the meaning of your name? Well, uh, actually, it means a jewelry box. It's an Indian name mm -hmm. and it means a jewelry box. Okay. Manjusha, for, uh, I will be recording this, uh, this speaking. Is it a problem to you? No, no. Excellent. Uh, can I know, do you work or study? Well, uh, presently I work as a trainer in an academy. I'm a computer science graduate, so I teach uh, about uh, languages, computer languages to my students. I've been doing this work for the past eight, eight, 10 years actually. Okay. Can you, can you tell me about the place you belong from? Yeah. I belong to Bhilai. It's a small town in Chhattisgarh uh, street. And uh, it is almost south east part of our country. Okay. Uh, can you please explain me the house where you live, live in? Yeah, I live in a cell phone house. Uh, it's quite a big house in fact. And I've been living there after my marriage for the past eight years. And this house is situated in a posh locality of my city. It's called as Nehru Nagar. And uh, it is almost near to move. And it is well connected with all other parts of our city. <laughs> and can you tell me about your locality, the area where you live in? Yeah, it's an urban area. People are educated and civilized. We have all modern facilities. Uh, uh, we have well developed roads and uh, supermarket. Even there is a mall just uh, two kilometers away from the house. <coughs> what do you like most about your hometown? Well, there are a lot of things that I love about my hometown. Like uh, it's a calm and quiet place. It's peaceful. It's not crowded and noise, noisy like big cities. But the most striking feature is that it is there is a cultural, religious, and linguistic diversity. People celebrate all the festivals and relive with harmony. Is your hometown a popular place for tourists to, to visit? Well, to be frank, uh, it's not a popular tourist place. As I said, it's a small town. Mm -hmm. uh, we have just a small zoo, a park, and uh, it's uh, recognized for its village street plant. But that plant is not a tourist place. Actually. Has your hometown changed much in recent years? Yeah, dramatically. It has drastically changed over the past few decades. Earlier we had some narrow roads and a few buildings, but now we have malls, we have cinema theatres, we have clubs, we have wide road, we have six lane, and a lot of other developments have taken place. Even uh, people are also more civilized and educated now. Let's talk about writing. What different types of writing do you do? For example, letters, emails, reports, or essays. Well, I as I'm a, uh, as I work, so I have I have to frequently write emails to students, parents, and even to different people. And apart from that, uh, I'm I'm also in habit of writing letters and essays. Do you prefer writing with a pen or using a computer? Well, uh, it's not about preference. Sometimes I have to write with pen, and sometimes with computer. Like if I have to write an email, I use a computer. And if I have to write a letter or an essay, then I write it. Use of pen and pencil. Okay. Do you write more now or less than you did a few years ago? Uh, well, it's an interesting question. Of course, I write less now as compared to past because earlier I was a student. And when you are a student, you have to write more. You have to write assignments, projects. But now I just write emails of you on very less things. Mm -hmm. So uh, obviously, I used to write more things. Do you like to write stories or poems? Oh, actually, it's an art writing poems and stories. It's an art. It needs creativity and imagination. And I don't think I'm that much creative. Although I like to read poems and stories. Let's talk a bit about music. How often do you listen to music? Uh, well, actually, I'm fond of listening to music, but I hardly get time to listen to music. But whenever I'm driving a car, I listen to three or four songs while I'm doing something. Do you prefer to buy CDs or download music from the internet? Um, well, the, these, are, these days are gone when a person buys CD. Even I also don't buy CD. Music is readily available on the internet, free of course. And even there are many applications on your phone from which you can easily access the internet and download music. So I also download music. Have you always liked the same kind of music? No. Um, well, it depends on my mood. I, sometimes I like listening to classical music, sometimes uh, when uh, I'm in a party mood I like to listen to pop music, jazz, girls, all sort of songs I, and music I love to listen to. It's not uh, like the same every day. Is there a musical instrument you would like to learn to play? Yeah. 
certain. I have always been dreaming to learn playing guitar. I am really fond of the tunes of guitar. And I am um, fascinated when I see people playing guitar. So if I get a chance, I will learn guitar. Okay, now I will be giving you a cue card which will have your questions on it. You will have a minute of time to prepare and you have to speak for two minutes. You can make notes. You will not ask any question to me. I will not stop you unless the time is up. Okay. Here is the cue card. Thank you. Uh, the topic I have got like being uh, after discovering when I help someone. Actually, being helpful is a good gesture and uh, I believe that if we help someone, we get help in return. So today I'm going to talk about a time when I helped someone. It was a time when I was in my school. I was uh, in the class 12 and uh, we have to appear in board exams. I was very good in mathematics. So one of my friends, she was uh, not good in maths. So she approached me to help her just one month before the exam. Uh, just one month was left and uh, I had to make her prepare for the exam and even my parents uh, were not happy they were angry that this time you should prepare but uh, you are helping other but still i was firm on my decision i decided to help her and uh, i asked her to come to my home every day for three to four hours so that i can uh, teach her and we can solve some questions so this fact will be continued for uh, the next 20 25 days uh, then our board exam started uh, the maths paper were also held and uh, when the results came she had scored very well and even uh, I think I don't remember clearly but she scored more than 70 out of 100 and it was really unbelievable for her and she was so happy she was actually jumping with joy and she was so elated when the results came and not only she even her parents were also happy and they expressed their gratitude to me uh, even my, my parents were proud of me that I helped her uh, even now. Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you. Okay, let's talk a bit about helping neighbors. <clears throat> what are the those practical things which people can do to help their neighbors? People can uh, neighbors can help each other in many ways, like borrowing like lending things from each other like vehicles or some daily household items. Uh, besides that, uh, looking after their house and their kids in their absence. And even uh, in cases of casualty and emergency, there are the people who can be approached quickly. So these are some practical things. Explain why neighbors should help each other. Neighbors ought to help each other because simply there is one reason because they are the immediate people who can be approached uh, quickly or you know uh, uh, everybody else can come afterwards, but the neighbors can be uh, accessed uh, quickly, so they should help each other. Do people in small towns help each other more than people in the cities? Yeah, I agree to this point. People in small towns help more each other than the people of cities. Mm -hmm. This is due to the reason that in small towns people have more time and they are more friendly with each other and they are. Uh, uh, more, uh, you know, they uh, believe in maintaining things. They are simple people. But in cities, people uh, have less time because they spend more time in their work and traveling. And even they have, they are more sophisticated. They are even not interested at all. Okay, let us talk about jobs that involve helping people. Can you identify jobs that focus on helping other people? Yeah, some jobs I can recall, like uh, the volunteer works, the people who work for NGO, social workers and the work of uh, policemen, they risk their lives to help others. Nurses, they do service for the deceased people. These are the jobs are there where people help, uh, help others. <coughs> Outline the qualities that people need to do jobs that involve helping others. Okay. Uh, well, a person should be empathetic first of all. This is the most important quality which is required. And then uh, one has to be kind, kind hearted, generous, and uh, soft spoken, friendly. All these qualities are required. And you know, uh, to and the quality of uh, serving others unconditionally. Selfless attitude is required. Can you comment on whether salaries for jobs that involve helping people are generally too low? Unfortunately, it is true that most of the jobs in, uh, that involve helping others, salaries for such kind of jobs is very low. 
it is due to the reason that uh, maybe uh, maybe i am wrong but i feel like uh, this kind of jobs require very less qualification experience and skills so maybe they are not uh, considered important by the people by the authorities so this is this can be the reason why they get less help uh let's talk a bit about attitudes towards helping other people uh, can you count for some people not wanting to help other people yeah this is true there are some people there are many people in fact who do not like to help others it is because of their selfish nature that's why right? and you know they are uh, so rigid that they are not moved at all by the pain of others they are self centered and uh, you know they do not bother what is happening next door and such kind of people are insensitive mostly do you agree or disagree that governments have a responsibility to help people of course government is chosen by the people for the people so it is their prime responsibility only to help the people because they have power they have money they have funds to you know to manage the people to help them hello students just now we demonstrated how a speaking session is conducted or how a speaking is conducted in ielts ielts exam uh, the video which you have seen uh, will range from somewhere between 7 to 8.5 and uh, basic feedback for the video is that uh, i feel there should be a bit of more vocabulary we were very much coherent that there is no problem in cohesion as well uh, lexical resources also up to mark and there is no grammatical mistake however vocabulary should be added for this uh, particular speaking session anything you want to add yes so even uh, i was a part of this demonstration there are four major criteria in which you are judged coherence to the speaking speaking to the point cohesion is the sequence that you should follow in narrating the way you narrate lexical resource stands for the vocabulary if you do not use a range of words you don't need to use exceptional words high quality words but it, there should be a range in the words while speaking and then grammar the parts of speech tenses and all and then the pronunciation the way of correctly speaking english and the fluency fluency means the speed you should not be too fast you should not be too slow these are the four parameters on which you are judged your gestures your uh, body language your uh, eye contact your dressing all things matter afterwards okay so these are the four parameters for one you should elaborate all your answers not a single sentence or a word should be spoken thank you